Greetings to you in the name that is above every name, that marvelous, matchless, and excellent name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Welcome to our Sunday School lesson at First Baptist Church, Denby. We are so happy and so elated that you have joined us today. The title of our lesson for today is Paul Ministers in Malta, coming from Acts 28, 1 through 10. Now, in our previous lesson, Apostle Paul uh, begins his journey to Rome, his holy calling given to him by God was to open men's eyes, to turn men's lives from the darkness to the light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Now, with Jesus Christ being the first fruit from the dead. Now, this kingdom we're talking about, the kingdom of God brings light and love. But the kingdom of darkness brings darkness and death. Now, Matthew 12, 30, according to the Message Bible states, this is war and there is no neutral ground. If you're not on my side, Jesus is speaking here, you're my enemy. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. In fact, you are against me. Now, we know which side Apostle Paul is on. He was once a persecutor of the church, but he was converted on the Damascus Road. But he is now a missionary, an evangelist, a teacher, a preacher of the gospel. But he's suffering, suffering much for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, he is walking out this living faith by boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Apostle Paul is uncompromising. He's unapologetic, and he is unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, because of the persecution that Paul has been experiencing, Paul has stood before Governor Felix, he stood before Governor Festus. He stood before King Agrippa. But there was nothing to warrant his imprisonment and nor his death. So off to Rome, Apostle Paul will go to appeal to Caesar. So as we proceed in our lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we just thank you right now for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We bless your name and we praise your name and we honor your name. For your word is mighty, O oh God, mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty to set free. And God, we thank you for this gospel message that Apostle Paul is carrying. And he is an example to us today that we must speak the word of the Lord and have a word in our mouth for a dying world. So God, help us to walk upright and do the things that are pleasing in your sight and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone who does not know him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, as we proceed in our lesson. All right, Paul Ministers in Malta, which is uh, the title of our lesson. Yes, it's coming from Acts again, but we're in Acts 28, 1 through 10. There are three lesson aims in our lesson. And the first one is to know how Paul helped people on the island of Malta to appreciate the ways other ministers, others minister to us and to minister to those in need. Now, keep in mind, this is a verse pulled from our focal verses that we want to highlight and emphasize. And it reads, and it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux. 
to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. That comes from Acts 28, 8. Now, get your Bibles. We want to read 10 verses. There are only 10 verses for our focal verses. And we want to read it together. And then we'll proceed even further into our lesson. Let's read. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, they there came out a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hands. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom thou, he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. And the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when he departed, they laid at us with such things as were necessary. This concludes our focal verses, God's word for God's people. Amen. Okay, now let's lay the foundation for our lesson today. Now, when the time was right, Apostle Paul departed to Rome. Remember, he's going to Rome. Now, you'll see in Acts 23 and 11 why God told him that he wanted him to go to Rome. And it reads, that night, the Lord stood by Paul and said, don't be afraid. You have given your witness for me in Jerusalem, and you must also do the same in Rome. So in our previous lesson, of course, Paul got on a, a large grain ship in Myra with Aristarchus and Luke heading for Rome. Of course, there were many others on the ship. Uh, there were about 276 people on that ship. And Paul had warned them that it was not safe for them to leave port. But they decided that they would not listen to his wise counsel, but they would proceed and go on toward Rome. But a great storm, thought to be a typhoon, arose. And they were tossed to and fro, to and fro, for many, many days. And we know the story from last week that they were shipwrecked. And we know that the way that they got to the island, some swam to the shore as the ship was breaking up. Others grabbed planks to make it to the shore, but all 276 of them made it to shore. Just as the angel of the Lord had said to Apostle Paul. Now this is awesome because when God speaks, he knows how to bring it to pass. Now, they find themselves on Melita or Malta. That's another name for it. Now, that brings us to main idea one, receiving help from strangers, coming from Acts 28, 1 through 2. Now, these shipwrecked strangers, these people who have been on the ship with Apostle Paul, they were wet and they were cold, they were wind-tossed and wave-tossed and drenched by the rain, and all 276 of them 
have been washed up on the shore of Melita, also called Malta. Now, Melita means a place of refuge. And this is going to truly be a place of refuge for them. Because when the people of Melita see them in distress and see them going through this crisis, trying to get to shore, they are going to be uh, so compassionate and so kind to them. Now, the people of Melita were considered to be barbarians. It simply means that they didn't speak the language, the Greek language, but they showed great kindness to, to them. And they displayed unusual compassion. They didn't have to do any of that, but they welcomed them to shore and they rallied again, uh, around these shipwrecked strangers. Now, they received all of them, 276 of them, and they welcomed them and they warmed them by making a fire, kindle a fire for them. Interestingly, these shipwrecked men did not jump ship. If you follow the previous lesson, uh, the sailors wanted to jump ship but they obeyed the instructions of Apostle Paul and they did not do so, but they followed the instructions of the man of God who said, if you stay on board, you will survive. Now, and survive they did. Please hear me. A man who is led by God is a man who is fit to lead and fit to lead others. Now, these people on Malta meant to do them good. They became a blessing to Paul and all of the others who had been shipwrecked. Now, here's a lesson for all of us to, to contemplate and to think about. Make sure that you don't miss your blessing by rejecting it because it did not come in the way that you expected it to come. It did not come from a place, the place you expected it to come, nor did it come from the people that you expected it to come from. God can use anyone he chooses to be a blessing. So we must receive it with grateful hearts and with much thanksgiving. Of course, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you uh, in, in many respects when it comes to receiving from others. God will give you that wisdom and that discernment and that, that knowledge and understanding that will guide you con concerning those who are bearing gifts with hidden motives. So we have to be aware of that. But if, if it is a blessing from the Lord, let us receive it with thanksgiving and much gratitude in our hearts. Now, Proverbs 11, 25 states, generous persons will prosper. Those who will refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Now that says a lot right there. Now, the people of Malta, their motives were pure and their motives were, were born out of kindness. They opened their hearts to do good to those in need. And as believers in Jesus Christ, now these were called barbarians, but those who believe in the name of the Lord are called to do good to others as well, especially those who are in need and to offer them help and comfort when it is needed. Now, these actions would not go unnoticed by God. Now, that brings us to main idea two, divine protection, coming from verses three through six. You know, the Lord is our shield and the Lord is our refuge and he takes care of his children. And here you see that uh, as an example of how God provides protection for us. Now, Apostle Paul, he was an ordinary man, 
serving a supernatural God. And we are ordinary people, but used by God as well. But he was looking for opportunities to serve others. When you are a leader, uh, you should not want to be served by others, but you want to serve others yourself. He saw a need and he addressed it. He did not think it was beneath him to be gathering sticks to lay on a fire. Now, the lesson continues and says that a viper, a poisonous snake, was driven out by the fire and fastened itself on Paul's hand. Now, the people of the island saw the viper hanging on Paul's hand. And they just knew that Paul was probably going to be a dead man because it was very poisonous. They thought that he was a murderer, perhaps, and that though he survived the shipwreck, justice would not permit him to live. You see how some people think and draw conclusions? They were waiting for Paul to swell up and die. And imagine... Isn't it amazing that people can so quickly draw assumptions and they assume the worst about you without even knowing you? But uh, Mark, in Mark 16, 17 through 18, it says, these are some of the signs that shall accompany believers. They shall throw out demons. This is the Message Bible. They shall throw out demons in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take snakes in their hands. They will drink poison and not be hurt. They will lay hands on the sick and make them well. You see, some of the same things that they're mentioning in Mark is going to happen on this island of Malta. And just remember that when they saw this viper hanging on Paul's hand, they thought that he was going to drop dead. But remember the word of the Lord for the people of God, for the blood-bought church of Almighty God, that they shall throw out demons in my name, they shall speak with new tongues, they will take snakes up in their hands. Now, it is called, what's happening to Paul? And I term it flowing in the anointing of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was with Paul all along. And he knew the Holy Spirit was going to, was going to protect and keep him. Now, no, we are not talking about tempting God. You know, a viper attaches itself to your hands. We are not talking about tempting God by passing around snakes. That You know, there are some churches that uh, did that. Uh, passing around snakes in church as part of the service and knowingly drinking poison to prove that this scripture is true. Now, we know that we don't want to tempt God in that manner. But if you want to really clear out a church, let someone bring a snake in church and ask you to pass it around. That's not what this scripture is talking about. It is talking about the divine protection of almighty God. So Apostle Paul shook the snake in the fire, shook that viper, and he was unharmed. And they were just watching. They had their eyes intently on Apostle Paul watching to see when he was going to swell up and when he was going to drop dead. Uh, so, but no harm came to him. And when no harm came to Apostle Paul, they changed their minds and thought that Apostle Paul was a god. Now, the religious leaders couldn't kill Paul. We know that that uh, was, some of them had made a vow that they wouldn't even eat until they killed Paul. They were steadily going after Paul and he was suffering because of that persecution. The shipwreck couldn't kill Paul and the viper definitely couldn't kill him either. 
God still had a plan and a purpose for Apostle Paul. God was not through with him yet. He still had kingdom work to do. And that's the same thing about the blood-bought church of the living God. God is not through with us. God wants to work through us. Uh, he wants us to tell about the kingdom, share the kingdom of Jesus Christ to a dying and lost world. Now, here's another thought to consider. We have to learn. You know how, how Apostle Paul shook that viper into the fire. You know, there are some things that happen in our lives. We have to learn how to shake those things off. If we're consistently entertaining every hurt, every pain, every disappointment, and even rejection, it is counterproductive to our spiritual growth because we are focusing more on the problem rather than a God who has everything under control and the one who can sort everything out and give you peace, even though these things may be happening to you. Now, main idea three, ministering to others. Now that uh, comes from verses seven through 10. Ministering to others should be a part of your spiritual DNA. Yes, I said it. Ministering to others should be a part of your spiritual DNA. Having a spirit of hospitality, caring about other people, meeting the needs of other people, and making sure that as you are going about doing good, that you are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we are called to keep on walking out this living faith. We can't stop. We must keep on pressing on and we must be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For we know that our labor is not in vain. Now, Publius, the governor, lived near where they landed welcomed them courteously, fed them for three days. and But he had a father who was ill with a fever and dysentery. Now the scripture said a bloody flux. Now the apostle Paul, once again, I said, flowing in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, he was being led by the Holy Spirit. This is how he moved. This is what he did as a man of God and as an evangelist, and as a son of the Most High God. This, he was an ordinary man, as I said earlier. Ordinary person. This ordinary man, Apostle Paul, he was moving by the power of the supernatural God who had a holy calling from the Lord. In other words, Apostle Paul always had foremost in his mind the holy calling that God had, had uh, challenged him to move forward in. He was about ministering to others. And he went in and he prayed for Publius, Father, and laid his hands on him and healed him. Apostle Paul's mentality was not, what about me? What about me? How can I be made comfortable? What about me? Me, myself, and I. You know, you heard that phraseology before. But he was looking for ways to be a blessing to the these people who had opened uh, their doors, so to speak, uh, and showing great hospitality to them. Now, all the other sick folk, now we know Hubbard's father was healed. But all the other sick folk on the island came and were healed. You see the hospi hospitality that was extended to this shipwrecked group of strangers numbering 276. And you see how God noticed the good things that they had done on behalf of them. And God will not be a debtor to any man because you cannot 
be God's giving. And you're not doing it just so you can receive necessarily from the Lord, but you're doing it because you're a child of the most high God. And that's what you do. And that's how you move because you are God's child. Now, as a result, they were showered with gifts. We are talking about uh, the people, the shipwrecked group of strangers. In other words, Paul, Apostle Paul, the 276, they were showered with gifts. And when they sailed, people put on board the ship that they were getting ready to uh, go on. All sorts of things that they needed for the trip to Rome. Yes, they were still going to Rome. Now, note, Apostle Paul understood his assignment. And everywhere Paul went, it was about ministry. And Paul's personal struggles did not stop him from doing good. Yes, he was suffering. He had suffering and, uh, and he had struggles and things going on in his life. But he was just demonstrating this living faith that we've been talking about in this quarter. And he was spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was revealing what this true and living God looked like, that he was a he is a healer and he is a deliverer and he is a rewarder of those who even give a cup of water to someone less fortunate. God sees that. And uh, also Apostle Paul was, as I said before, was spreading the gospel of D Jesus Christ and demonstrating what the love of Christ looked like to these people in Malta, even in the midst of the difficulties that he experienced in his life. So think about this. Do you know what your assignment is? Think also, how can I walk out this living faith? now? If you don't know how to walk it out, I've got the perfect answer for you. You must be born again so that you can have and experience this living faith that we've been talking about today. And the scripture from Romans 10 states, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts him will never be disgraced. Another uh, translation is, you will never be put to shame. And just remember, how uh, uh, Apostle Paul was demonstrating to us what true ministry looked like. And also the power of God to heal and so much more in our lesson. So this concludes our lesson. Let's be about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's be about doing good. Let's be about working out our own soul salvation with trembling and fear before the Lord. So this concludes our lesson. May God's richest blessing be yours, and I'll see you the next time.